hey guys, in this video, the brilliant Mr. B is going to be using a calculator to work out percentages. Now there are 15 examples here at three different levels. You can look at the pinned comment to work out where each level starts. Now, if you want more examples, if you want more practice questions to properly see if you've understood this really important skill, then there are loads more examples in the workbook or the multiple choice questions over on my website. Okay, so we're going to have a look at calculating percentages using a calculator. Now there is a non-calculator method and a calculator method for this. So if you do have a calculator, this is the method that is the fastest. Now the way to do this is to directly type the question into your calculator. So when we have 10% of 180, you can actually type that into your calculator and here's how. So firstly, we're going to have a look at the 10%. Now some calculators have a calculator button, but if they don't, what you can do is type in 0 0.10 and where I've got that from is in the 10% the tens column is the first decimal place and the units column is the second decimal place so that's how you write 10% into a calculator with a percentage button next we we'll have a look at the of and again, you do have a button for of on your calculator, and it's just the multiply button. So if you see an of, usually it means multiply. Finally, we've got 180, and of that into a calculator, you type 180. So if you type 0 0.10 multiplied by 180 into a calculator, then you should get 18 and 18 is the answer. Moving on to question two, I'm gonna use exactly the same method. I'm gonna type the percentage in first. So we have 50%. Remembering that the tens column is the first decimal place. And the second decimal place would be the units column, which is a zero. Then it says of again, so we're gonna be multiplying. And then this time we have 330. 30. So if you type into your calculator 0 0.50 multiplied by 330, then you should get 165 as the answer. And we can check our answer here because 50% is the same as a half. So is 165 around about a half of 330? Sounds about right. So I'm going to move on. Question three, we have 25% to start off with. And so if we look at the tens column and the units column as our first two decimal places, we would have 0 0.25. Then we have the off, so we are multiplying. And then we have the 300 and 50. So if you type into calculator 0 0.25 multiplied by 350, you are going to get 87.5. Moving on to question four, we're starting off with 80%. So that is eight tenths and zero units. So in my decimal, I'm going to have eight tenths and zero hundredths. Again, we will be multiplying and we've got 110. So if you type into your calculator 0 0.80 multiplied by 110, then your answer is going to be 88. Question five on the easy questions, we have 5%. Now be very careful with this. The five is in the units column and we have nothing in the tens column. So when we come to write our decimal, the first decimal place is the tens column and there's nothing there. So we have to write a zero and the five is in the units column. So 5% is 0 0.05. We're multiplying, we have 320. And we can type this into a calculator, so 0 0.05. Make sure you do get that second zero in, very, very important. Multiply by 3, 2, 0, and your answer should be 16. Now we're going to move on to the medium questions. Now the difference between the medium and easy questions is those easy questions, you could have done a lot of those in your head, or you could have done the written method and it wouldn't have taken too long. But now with these medium questions, the written method would take us quite a long time and we can't confirm the answers in our head, so we have to trust our method here. So same method, starting off with a 46%, looking at the tens column and the units column when we form our decimal. So we would have 0 0.4. 
six, tenth decimal place, units column, second decimal place. Then we have of, which means multiply usually. And then we have 440, which we can type directly into our calculator. So on your calculator, type in 0 0.46 multiplied by 440, and you should get an answer of 202.4. Now, question two, we have 7%. Very careful with tens and units, we only have a units column, the seven. So we make our decimal, remembering that the tens column is the first decimal place and the units column is the second decimal place. The seven is going to go in the units column. So everything else is filled up with zeros. Then we have the of, which means multiply. And then we have the 500, which again, as a normal number, very easy to type into a calculator. So if we type 0 0.07 multiplied by 500, you should get 35 as the answer. Question three, we have 96%. Again, taking note of where the tens and units are. So our decimal, we're gonna fill in the tens for the first decimal place and the units for the second decimal place. We'll be multiplying as usual and we're multiplying by 220. So on your calculator, type in 0 0.96 multiplied by 220 and you should get as your answer 211.2. Now, once you start to get confident, you won't need to put so much effort into the method. You start to do this automatically. So when you see the next question, you'll see 41% of 150. So you'll just write in 0 0.41 multiplied by 150 and eventually do this without thinking. So on your calculator, 0 0.41 multiplied by 150 and that's going to give us 61.5. Then moving on to question 5, we have 11%, so 0 0.11 of 200 and 30. So on a calculator, we're going to type in 0 0.11 multiplied by 230, and the answer is going to be 25.3. Now, it's very important to note here that I have written down on the page every single button that I've pressed on the calculator, and on a GCC exam, you need to do this as well. Now, I know you can put all this on a calculator, and it seems like extra effort to write down all the calculator buttons you're writing on your calculator one by one but these questions tend to be worth more than one mark and if you do make a mistake and all you're working out is on the calculator you are getting zero marks however if you wrote down the exact numbers you pressed on your calculator and maybe you pressed an extra button by mistake and didn't realize maybe there is a mistake in the calculation you might still get some marks you might get a mark for writing the correct multiplier down you might even have the correct calculation written down and you did press the wrong button to get the wrong answer and the examiner can see that and they can award you a few marks for it. So please, please, please write down every button you type on the calculator on your exam paper. Moving on to the hard questions. What I'm going to do to start off is just try and follow the same method we've been using. So we have increase, I'm not sure what that means, but we have 370. So we can type that into our calculator. We're increasing by. Now, by is going to be the same as multiply just like in the easy and medium questions of was also indicating that we're doing a multiplication and then we have got the 10 percent now i'm just going to do this calculation wrong on purpose to show you something so 10 percent we have our tens and units which will give us 0 0.10 in the previous calculation we've done and if you typed 370 multiplied by 0 0.10 we're going to get 37. Now it's not wrong you will get some marks for this on an exam but it's all about what the question says it says we're increasing. Now let's imagine this was money if you had 370 pounds and you increased it by 10%, you're going to expect to get more money. And if your £370 bank account suddenly turned to £37, then you've lost more than £300. Your amount of money has gone down. So you wouldn't be happy to get 37 as an answer. You want to get more than 317. So, so what we need to do is add the 37 onto the 370. Now that's getting into a non-calculator method. So is there a way to do it without having to add on 370? Well, there is. When we say increase, we mean we are keeping 100% of the value that we have. We're keeping 100% of 370, and then we're making it 
10% bigger. So 10% bigger than 100% is 110%. You just add the numbers together. Now, when we have 110%, we have a units column, zero, which I've already got written down. I've got a tens column, the 110, which I've got written down. And I've got a hundreds column, the one. And the hundreds column goes before the decimal place. So normally we have a zero there. You say we've got zero hundreds. But now we've got 110. We want to write a one there. So we have a... Now we type this into our calculator. So we're going to type in 370 multiplied by 1.10. That's going to give us a final answer of 407. So... We've increased our money. £370 is now £407. We have more money, so we're happy now. And if you think about the previous wrong answer, we had 37. 370 plus 37 is 407. So this is going to be the correct answer. So we move on to question two. Again, let's take it one step at a time. We've got the 400. Then we've got, we're increasing by. So we are multiplying. And then we've got the 1%. But it's not 1% because we're increasing. So we have 100% we're increasing. We've got the 1%. So altogether, we've got 101%. So we look at hundreds, tens, and units. We have 100, we have zero tens, and we have one unit. So on our calculator, we're going to type in 430 multiplied by 1.0. One. And that's going to give us an answer of 434.3. And when we get an answer, always compare it to what you started with. We started with 430, we've increased, and our answer is larger than 430. It's a 1% increase, so we only increased it by a very small amount. And we can see with 434.3, it's only slightly bigger than 430. So our answer does seem to make sense. So let's do this again with question three. We've got 460. Let's write that down. And you'll notice in the easy and medium questions, we had the number written last, and now I write the number down first. And with a multiplication, because we are multiplying, it doesn't actually matter which way around your multiplication is. You'll always get the same answer. So don't worry about if your percentage goes first or last. It doesn't matter. Then looking at our percentage, we've got 49%, but it's an increase. So actually, it's not 49% at all. It'd be 100 and 49%. If you're increasing, add your percentage onto 100%. You're keeping the original 100% value. So we have 100, 4 tens, and 9 units. Remembering that the hundreds column is the units, the tens column is the first decimal place, and the units column is the second decimal place. So on our calculator, we can type this in now. We have 460 multiplied by 1.49, and that gives us an answer of 685.4. Now, moving on to question four, we can see something's change. You know, it says decrease instead of increase, but we'll start off the same way. So we have 260. Let's write that down. It's increasing by 12%, so we're going to be multiplying. And then when we think about decreasing by 12%. With increasing, we added on with a 100%. Now, with decrease it, we're going to do some taking away. So when we say decrease by 12%, what we need to do is we are starting off with 100%. And we're not going to add on. We're going to be taking away, take away the 12%. So I'm going to have to borrow one. I have to borrow one from all the way over to the hundreds. 10 will go down to 9, the one we borrowed. 10 take away 2 is 8, and 9 take away 1 is 8. So what we're actually finding is 88%. And if you think about it, 88% is 12% less than 100%. So we're going to type in 0 0.88. We have no hundreds column this time, so that's a 0 in the units. And then we've got our first and second decimal place from the 8 and the 8. So let's see if this works on the calculator. I'm going to type in 260 multiplied by 0 0.88. And our answer, 228.8. Now, again, just check your answer. We started with 260. 
it's gone down to 228.8. So it has gone down. And then 12%, it's not going to be a huge decrease. And it's not gone down by that much. It's gone down by about, by, by about 40. So that seems about right. So now moving on to the final question, we have 380. So let's write that. We are always going to be multiplying with these questions. Now there are situations we do divide, but we'll come on to that in a later video. And then we have 5%. Now with 5%, again, I strongly suggest you just do a, uh, a column subtraction for this. So we have 100 take away five. If you do it in your head, that's fine. Then it can be a little bit difficult to do in mental arithmetic. So I want to do zero take away five. I can't, so I'm borrowing one from all the way over to the one. 10 will go down to nine, borrowed one. 10 take away five is five and nine take away zero is nine. So that will give us 95%. If you're decreasing by 5%, then 5% less than 100% is 95%. Again, I'm sure you can do that one in your head, but with a lot of these, having to borrow or make your mental arithmetic get a bit messed up. So a column subtraction is always really helpful. So that will be 0 0.95, and we can type this into a calculator. So 380 multiplied by 0 0.95 should give you 361 for your app. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have had explained scratches.